everyone, welcome to our wedding planning series, episode two, our Toronto wedding venue search. Just a quick little background about me. My name is Terry, and I am from just north of Toronto, Canada. I met my now husband, Anthony, who's from the United States in 2016. We have been long distance our entire relationship. So we ended up getting engaged and married in a small little ceremony in April, 2021. The border was still closed and we were in lockdown here in Canada, or at least Ontario at the time. We didn't know when the borders would open and we didn't want to wait. So we got married, but we really did want to have a wedding celebration eventually. So once the borders opened, we started planning our wedding. Now to everyone watching this, specifically my friends and family now thinking, oh, the wedding is in Toronto. So sorry, the wedding's actually not going to be in Canada. We started looking in the US and fell in love with the very first place we toured. We kept it in the back of our minds and wanted to give Toronto and Southwestern Ontario a chance. But ultimately we did end up picking a beautiful venue in North Carolina. But if you are a Toronto bride or a soon to be married couple looking for a wedding venue in Toronto, this video is for you. I hope you enjoy. All right, starting with the Guild in Estates. When you pull up, there's this beautiful column structure and you have the reception hall to your right and then the gazebo pavilion to your left. We were most interested in the gazebo, but we did look at one of the ballrooms just for fun. Of all the ballrooms in Toronto, these were definitely the most outdoorsy ones, at least from what I've experienced. Most of the weddings that I've been to are ballrooms reception halls, but we wanted a more rustic kind of venue. We wanted an outdoor element as well, but this would give you kind of a best of both worlds with the big windows you can see outside and the trees and the gardens and everything. It would be a great option if you want that best of both worlds. The chairs they provide are these clear chairs. I wanted more of a rustic farm table with no full length linens if I could get away with that and crossback chairs. This wasn't my idea, but it's provided, which is great. So this is the patio ceremony spot that they planned to tent, but actually hadn't done yet. They didn't have any photos of what it looked like with the tent so I was kind of hesitant about it at the time. Otherwise, another option for a ceremony is their gazebo, which they've introduced glass paneling, making it weatherproof, which is awesome. But this is where we were actually considering the reception to be, since we didn't want that ballroom vibe. It's got a really nice modern feel with the outdoor element, which was a big thing for me. The other side was just a very blank white wall where you could do the bar or the head table. You kind of had options to customize the space in here because it was a big open square kind of room. I actually found this option by watching Nitsan's wedding video on YouTube. She's a YouTuber and she was planning her wedding in Toronto and I found her through her series. She had a reception at the gazebo at Guild Inn and they did it up really nice with like lights on the top of the ceiling. I really was inspired by her wedding to tour this venue. A huge plus is that there's no wedding fee with a minimum number, which was great. We were probably thinking we would hit that number because I have a huge family. Lots of venues do have a fee on top of your catering if it's in-house, which Gildan is. They would have a per person fee as well as a venue fee, but this place didn't with your minimum number. They did have a ceremony fee though. I believe it was $2,000. Prices will change. They will go up as years go on. So don't quote me on the prices. If I mention any in the video, uh, just check out the link below for all the venues that I feature. They also had a tech fee and so can fee, which all venues have that fee for weddings. And their service fee was definitely the highest of all the venues, which makes sense since they don't have a venue fee. Another plus of this venue was they have great grounds for photo opportunities. You can see Lake Ontario. This was April 2nd, so not a lot of growth in the area to see what it would look like in the summer wedding that we wanted, but definitely lots of photo opportunities. Then that patio for the ceremony I was talking about is in front of the white building that's connected. So if it were raining, you would travel inside from your ceremony to your reception. If it wasn't, you could go outside into the gazebo if that's where you were having your reception, otherwise to the ballroom. While the gazebo had a good capacity number, I wanna say it was like 400 for a seated dinner or maybe less than that, I'm not sure. The patio really didn't feel like it could actually fit that number and everyone would be sitting on an angle as well. People would be here. 
and then this will be what you can see behind. I don't know, just some question marks there. We did explore the grounds though, which like I said, would be much more lush in the summer, but they've got different sculptures and columns throughout for great photo opportunities, which is awesome. Next up is a venue called Ravine. It is a winery in the Niagara on the lake region. We looked at their barrel cellar as an option for a rehearsal dinner. If you were having a smaller wedding, you could have it in the barrel cellar. There's 60 guests seated or 80 for cocktails and canapes so if you're thinking about a smaller wedding you could have it there and this is our uh, charcuterie room where we uh, cure the meats oh fun cool. i didn't even notice that but the Ravine Event Center was more our vibe and what we were going for with our number. Their max is 250 for a seated dinner. Once you walk in there, there is an entryway plus a little bridal suite that would be accessible throughout the day. I will just point out the floor is carpet. It is a nice carpet, like it looks fancier. It's 4,000 square feet inside. The bar would be in the back and you can hang stuff from that like wood hanging feature, which I really liked. Plus I liked that like rustic feel in there. The number one part that I loved were the tables. They were way more my vibe than Guild Inn. Rustic and can be left uncovered or have like a sash of fabric in the middle, like a runner. That's something I really like. Anthony loved the huge TV made up of TVs on the side, which you can use on the day. And of course the wraparound terrace and huge windows looking out of the vineyard was probably my favorite part. Of all the places we toured, this was definitely my my favorite in Canada, but unfortunately it was much pricier. There were of course other places that I loved that we didn't tour that were either not good location wise or they were just way pricier, like quite expensive. I mean, all of these like averaged out to 200 a head for food if they were in-house catering, this one is. But anyways, I did like that you could make use of the terrace during cocktail hour and everything was in one one spot very close together. The ceremony would be on the lawn however you wanted it to face. It was completely up to you whether your altar was by the vines or on the other end or on the side, whichever. But the aisle would basically go down the stairs and wherever your altar was, you would end up. Last thing I'll note about Ravine is their pricing was kind of unknown. So the wording on the pamphlet kind of suggested that there was no venue fee, but then also suggested that there was one. When we asked on the tour. They did say that there was one, but it depended on what day you picked. I don't know. I was just confused by that. And their per person plate in-house meal was very expensive because it was farm to table, which of course I love that idea. It was a hefty cost per person with all these like add-ons that we would have wanted would have made it even more expensive. So the next one is Madison Greenhouse. This one is in Newmarket, so quite a bit north of Toronto. This one is situated in a greenhouse like the name suggests. You walk in and there's this cute heart archway. To your left, there's the possible cocktail area with the ceremony spot that's indoors right beside it. Then the reception area is through the archway. It's a huge rectangular space. The washrooms and small offices are around the big wall with the stone feature, like kind of towards the back of it, more so to the left. But the main feature is obviously the trees, which were my favorite part, definitely so picturesque, plus the lights that hang through it makes it super magical and they do remain up regardless. The ceremony spot is also very green and full of nature, which I loved. Then their cocktail hour section has a bar and space to mingle with high top tables. They're mostly like garden style with that like mosaic tile, which were super nice, or you could cover them if you chose. Quite a few of the photo spots were tucked away right behind the altar and you know, throughout the greenhouse, there's different spots for photos. Photos. The ceremony spot fits around 265 people, I believe, on these like folded white chairs. They have a mic that hangs through the branches above the arch at the altar, which is nice. This would have been our only option for a ceremony spot. They do have an outdoor one, but we were specifically considering winter.
winter slash colder months because it gets quite hot in the greenhouse. I forget what she said, whether it was like five degrees hotter or something like that than the outdoor temperature. Summer was definitely not an option for us. Even though they do have fans going, it would just be too hot. The gold chairs that they have on site are $3 per chair. Not as much if you were to rent them from an outside company, but the first two venues, you didn't have to pay for chairs separately, which was a bonus of those. The dance floor is in the middle, no matter what. Once we headed outside, they have this open air covered spot for cocktail hour during the nicer months, plus a little smoking area that she noted. Then the altar would be under the gazebo. Chairs could be placed in the like open paved space. So mostly a summer fall option with the trees all around would make it a beautiful space. Jumping back inside, you have the bar, which may be someone's vibe. I didn't really love it myself. They have a cold room that's accessible close to there and the bonus of this venue, which is not common I don't think, is you can bring your own booze. By that I mean you purchase a liquor license for your event and then you buy and bring the booze for the bartenders to serve rather than having it lumped in to your catering fee. That is a great option to save money. Usually an open bar fee is like way more expensive than what you'd actually be drinking. Our venue that we picked has that option, but none of the other venues in Canada that we even and research had that option. So you could save a lot of money there, but there is a hefty venue fee associated with it. So with the fact that the catering is actually outsourced, they have a list of suggested, or I believe required caterers that they use, but they're technically outsourced. So they may be a bit cheaper than some of the other in-house catering options from this whole venue list. But the kitchen was behind the bar, close to the bar area and a little bit tucked away, but mostly open and they didn't have a working oven. So catering companies would cook offsite and bring in the food or bring their own cooking setup that would be outside and just kind of go in and out from there and prepare your plated meals. And then beside the kitchen, there's this spot with couches where kids usually end up is what she was saying. They do have a bridal and groom suite kind of tucked away in this area as well that you would have access to. They do have an actual house that we didn't get to tour that you do have access to if you pay a certain amount more money. It is like right on site. So that is a plus if you want that option for an additional cost. All right, next up is Courtright Center for Conservation. It is a bit of a walk from the parking to the main building, but it has a really nice drive on the way in that unfortunately I did not get to film. But right inside there's a gift shop that is covered. When it's closed, this is the main hall reception spot or an inside ceremony spot. It doesn't fit as many people as the downstairs space, which we were most interested in. Unlike Ravine, this place actually has some really outdated carpet. One of the features I really did not like about this venue, unfortunately. The first ceremony spot is the Forest Path. Courtright's ceremony spots are definitely the highlight of this place. When it's all lush and green in the summer, there are some really pretty opportunities for photos. Plus you have the whole grounds for photo opportunities here. And while we didn't explore so much of that area, by looking online, there are some gorgeous, epic spots that you can get like throughout the trees. Definitely research the photos of this place. They can get quite aesthetic and gorgeous. And then we'll have a signing table off to the side, like to sign the marriage license. Okay. And then your guests will be right here. Yeah. So this is called the Forest Path. The will stand there at the bottom. Mm -hmm. The chairs are gonna go like this, and then they're flaring out. And then the stump is going to be in your photos. Okay. But yeah, all green, right? Mm -hmm. like all that. of the sites are very pretty. It's just a matter of preference. The one sad thing about this place though is probably the nicest spot for reception wouldn't fit our guest list. I have a huge family, like I said, and our draft one list was just about 300 people and the glass house would only fit around 120. So we were planning to have this spot as our backup ceremony spot since you could see more people in like a theater style, but it would make a great cocktail hour space. You have access to the whole grounds like I said there's a later start time because this place is open to the public during the day but 
you have the area to choose from. You just need to timeline it a little bit ahead of time where you want each section of your event to be held. Farther from the building is the best ceremony spot in our personal opinion. You can't actually have the lights turned on here unless you got a generator, but during the day, it wouldn't really be necessary. It just adds to the beauty of the space. I will say that when I was trying to figure out how many people could be seated, I don't know if that many people could be in a row. So it might have a lot of rows if you have a large guest list. So that was one of my concerns. So we are contemplating the other ceremony spots, but this was definitely our favorite. Going back through and past the glass house, you've got the forest gallery, which would have been our reception space. It's an L-shaped space. So the bar would be when you first walk in, whether from the stairs or from outside. And it features ceiling to floor windows with beautiful views. You're basically like suspended in the trees, which is nice, but you do have to pay for for the lights to be on. They have them strung on the beams and they stay there, but you do have to pay to have them turned on. And because this is a conservation space, there are classrooms behind those white doors on that white wall on the left of the space. The one thing I hated about the space was it, that it was so closed off because of it. If only they could get rid of those classrooms and the carpet, but of course I understand it is an education space, a con conservation space. It is a converted wedding venue space. They do you have a ceremony fee. They don't have a venue fee, but that ceremony fee does provide you with these white folding chairs, which you can use for your reception if you want. I want to say that there was a cost for that though, or it was provided. I'm not sure. Otherwise you get the gross plastic lawn chairs that you could cover if you wanted to, but we would have had to rent outside chairs for an event here. And they do have an event company that they work with for rentals and their catering is in-house with a company called Peter and Paul's. Otherwise, there is no reception fee. So of all the places we did consider, this was one of the cheaper options of them and also one of Anthony's favorite venues. It was the one that we would have leaned towards the most in Canada if we chose to have our wedding in Canada. I really liked how they have this wraparound patio you could use during the night as like a space for fresh air or a great spot for people to mingle during cocktail hour. You do have to pay extra for the fire spot to be lit up for a like s'mores kind of thing, just so you know. The next wedding venue is Club Roma. It is also in the Niagara region. It is another reception hall with an outdoor option kind of venue. I had to use the bathroom, so I filmed a little bit of the bathrooms. They're quite nice. And then they have the champagne wall lying around, so I believe you could use it as an addition to your event, which is awesome. But we were mostly here for the garden pavilion. So it's this giant covered space with side panels that can cover the sides if you want, or they can be left open, weather permitting. So a great option, just like the gazebo at Guild Inn. The lights in the middle do stay on, but provides a beautiful touch to this venue. And a huge fan at the top as well can be run if it were a hot day, which is awesome. Then you have access to a covered bar area and an outdoor space. The one thing I hated though is you could see the huge garbage bins right next to the wedding. The other thing that I didn't love is the retirement slash apartment building. I forget what it was. It's quite an eyesore. They did assure us that the trees would fill out in the summer and you wouldn't be able to see it, but I don't know how much I believed that because it's like it was right there and there weren't that many trees, but they did have like a garden space surrounding the pavilion, but not as much as what I was anticipating based on what they advertise. So opportunities for photos there, but I don't know how much. Then their biggest outdoor ceremony spot is shared amongst the ballroom. You have a set schedule. I believe the garden pavilion is designated for a certain time. It is a beautiful, nice space, but behind it is a soccer field, which I do trust that the trees would fill out enough so that you wouldn't be able to see it. It wouldn't be that you couldn't hear it if there was an event going on. So I think depending on the, their schedule for this soccer club whether you'd be able to hear it during your event so I felt like that was a bit of a gamble for me they also have a smaller ceremony spot with trees that are like scattered throughout wouldn't accommodate our guest list but is an option for a smaller event 
And then walking back inside, they showed us all of their accessories that they have. They're for no additional cost. So you have access to anything on a first come first serve basis for your night, which is great. A very great touch to this venue. And then I think you could pick between the clear and the gold chairs for no additional cost as well. They did have no venue fee, another great plus, and their catering was actually quite reasonable. The least expensive of any of the venues in this video, but because of how inexpensive it was and all the additions this place was booked up their availability was quite slim and we were looking at the venue like more than a year out they also have a locked bridal suite you'd be able to access that's inside near the reception rooms and the bar is outside this space in the hallway then there's also an inside ceremony space that they use for rainy days as a backup they have their two reception hall spaces. This last one was actually really cool. They had a starry sky with like shooting stars going across the ceiling, which was wild. And then they had the gold chairs laid out that you can see here. Last but not least, we toured Holland Marsh, which is also another venue a little bit more up north of Toronto, Newmarket area as well. It is a winery and it has these two beautiful outdoor areas and spots for photos, one by the pond and the other one is closer to the vine the altar would probably be like right up against the tree line or really wherever on the grass area, but quite picturesque and nice as an outdoor ceremony spot. Another ceremony spot could also fit people on the stone patio area, would not accommodate as many people, or you could do that as a rainy day backup. Open the doors, I think, and have the chairs inside and then have your altar just outside. Or what we were going to do was have our cocktail space be on this patio space. You could have those barrels used as like high top tables. I believe you had access to a certain amount of them for your wedding, but unfortunately you couldn't leave the doors open. So I would have liked like an in and out kind of situation. They said, unless it's a ceremony, we leave the doors open, but not for like a cocktail hour. You would have to go like through their front door area into the reception. So this is, this is where that is. Tiny little foyer space. And then into the main reception space. It gives me like Northern Muskoka cottage log house vibes very much with all the like natural wood in there. And there was quite a few windows. So provided a good amount of natural light, which is always great. I just didn't love the orangey wood as much. The bar is situated in the back and they do have stairs going up to a space that you could use for any overflow guests that they can't accommodate on like the main floor. And then the bridal suite is up there as well. Very cute, tiny little space for the last minute touch-ups and getting ready. And they do have their chairs stored upstairs as well. The crossback chairs were an extra charge, but definitely the ones we would have gone with. Otherwise, they have their like banquet hall style ones to your right that wasn't a charge, I don't think. But ultimately the best part of the store, which I did not expect was at the end, they were like, okay, ready for the best part? And we're like, what? <laughs> Let's taste the wines. And I was like, okay. They let us have a sample tasting of each of the wines that would be part of your day. They did have a venue fee at this location, but they have wine included and all the house wines on the list you get to taste. So that was the best part. Catering was outsourced as well, but they had a list of the catering that they go with. So that maybe might offset the venue cost a little bit, but that was the the last venue we toured and it capped off with a wine tasting and the wine was very good I will say. <laughs> so those were all the wedding venues we toured in Toronto and southwestern Ontario. None of them really took our breath away like the one that we picked in North Carolina. We are comparing both the pricing and the outdoor features to the one that we loved and nothing price-wise and like views wise compared. So that was why we didn't pick any of those venues here. They could be great options for you. I hope you found some value in it. Like I said, all the links to each and every venue will be down below if you want to take a look. If you did like this video, please don't forget to give it a like and comment down below which venue was your favorite. And please don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. Thanks again for watching everyone and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.